Hello my friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Cassie and today we're going to do a little knit and chat, a little catch up. I have a few things that I wanted to talk about and I figured this was a pretty good time to do it. So I'm going to grab my knitting. I've got a few things here that I'm trying to decide between. Let's do, I think I'm, I know what I'm going to pick. One second. So I've been working on this sweater, honestly, probably since March, but actually maybe April, but I've just honestly been really avoiding working on it. I think because, well, I don't know. I just got bored of the, I got bored of the baubles. And then I also, here, I'll show you the baubles, but I got bored of the baubles. And then I also started to work on summer things. And then I got distracted by other winter projects that I wanted to work on. And so I basically just stopped working on this altogether and um, I'm picking it back up because I would like to wear it um, and is now the time to do that. The only thing is that I wasn't really careful with the baubles on the back. The spacing looks pretty bad, to be honest. Um, I guess the front, yeah. I don't know if you can tell, but I think it looks pretty bad. You might not be able to tell, but you might also be able to tell. And I just, I don't know, part of me is like, oh, maybe I should rip it back. But I also feel that if I rip it back, I probably won't ever get to it. So I'm just gonna keep working on it. I'm gonna finish it and uh, just be done with it. And it's, it's the back, the front looks okay. So I don't know. I, I know, I just know that if I rip it back, there's absolutely no way that I'm picking it back up. And I would, I'm really just ready to get this off of my needles right now. And so, and if you've noticed, I'm, these are two different needles because all my needles are really messed up right now, but this one's a bit smaller and this one is the size that I need for the hem. So that's all good. So a few of the things I wanted to talk about today is that I actually started a new job this week. So I'm gonna keep doing my YouTube and I actually feel a little bit more invigorated to do my YouTube channel because I've got a little bit, I think I've just got a little bit more brain space to dedicate to it rather than trying to like, you know, I was trying to make money doing YouTube. Honestly, I was, but that's just the, the reality. I was hoping to make it, if not full time, be like a, a big part of my income. And it didn't pick up the way that I wanted. And I found that I was honestly kind of stressing about it and feeling like I, what I was producing wasn't good enough. And just like, it was making me feel really uncreative. I didn't want to sew because I felt that if I sewed, I had to record it. And I was just like, it just wasn't, it wasn't really sparking joy anymore. And then one of my big contracts that I was working on came to an end. Um, we just had to, you know, part ways. Um, and that was fine. I totally like respect the decision for that to happen. But yeah, at the same time, I was bummed. And uh, it was a contract I really liked working on. But it sort of made me realize that, okay, that's a pretty good portion of my income that is gone now. And I was working at a yoga studio part time and doing this contract and then doing a bunch of other little freelance stuff. And so like money was coming in, but it wasn't really predictable. And with yeah, that major sort of loss to my income happening, I was like, okay, something needs to change. And then this job popped into my inbox. Um, literally the next day after I had started thinking about what to do next and I had a little bit of a mental breakdown and a big cry to my partner and a lot of confusion. And I realized that this was maybe the, a job that I could do and that was would be something that would be good for me. But it was a nine to five. And it was nine to five and I had in my head said to myself, like no more nine to five. And so I felt like I was gonna be going backwards if I did a nine to five, I really did. And up until this week, I was still kind of feeling like that Monday and Tuesday, a little bit of a loss of freedom, a loss of self, a loss of like my ambitions. And then as the week went on, I really started to enjoy myself. I know it's, it's still like brand new work, but 
I started to realize that my brain just felt a little bit lighter. Like I felt tired, but my my brain just felt a little bit more at ease. I was like, oh, I can I can take it easy. I can relax a bit. I can focus on my creative stuff just because I want to, just for fun. And I can sew when I want to and I don't have to show anyone and I can um, knit you know at home in the evenings when my brain doesn't really want to brain anymore and I realized how nice it was going to feel to have a routine again and I'm sure a routine will feel old at, at times and you know all the usual sort of feelings but at the same time I do actually really feel like this is a good step um, and it's working for a sewing pattern company and I am really excited to be there. And, you know, it's a job that I wouldn't have maybe even applied for if I was still working my other contract because I was happy doing that contract and happy making things work. But it all kind of came together at the right time. And going into the office three days a week has been really nice. Uh, at least for this week, you know, it was my first time doing it and meeting the team and seeing the creative process and being around fabric and talking to people about sewing and knitting and people who speak, you know, that language and have that interest and are, you know, part of the same corners of the internet as me. Um, it was really satisfying and it felt really cool and really fun. So I am really excited that that was, you know, something I was able to make happen. And I'm really looking forward to like this next little chapter of creating when I feel like it, um, sharing when I, when I feel inspired to, Le yeah, letting my, my brain take a bit of a break from all of the stress of scheduling and planning and trying to sort out where money is coming from and just enjoy this process for myself yeah you know i i feel really grateful for this community that i've built and i've heard from you guys in the comments you know when i've expressed some stress about youtube and the direction i want to take it you've told me to just have fun with it and relax and honestly i just wasn't able to do that i couldn't because i was trying to make money on this platform and through my other platforms and through freelancing and i was just always looking for opportunities and it really stifled my creative vision and creative growth and creative sight you know to be honest my visualization and um, i'm really interested to see if it comes back how it comes back i do find that it is you know now that i don't have to really focus on the money as much i can just kind of see where things go and um i have room for that and i'm not stressed about that i feel good about that and so that was so that was one of the updates that I wanted to bring to you guys. Um, I feel really excited about it. And um, I also feel really excited about sharing. Again, it's really nice to also wear outfits that I'm really excited about. Um, and like, I get to make clothes that I can wear amongst people who also make their own clothes. And um yeah, so I've been feeling some like fresh inspiration for knitting and for sewing as well. I like hadn't really sewed much in a while and I made this cardigan. This is the Marlowe cardigan. Oh, I got a little stain on it. But this is the Marlowe cardigan from True Bias. And this is such a nice quick sew. It's super fun. Um, this is in a like a, um, a merino blend from the fabric store out of Australia. I love it. I just, I love it so much. Um, it's really comfy, really warm, but lightweight at the same time. Um, I have been really avoiding knitting a cardigan. <laughs> and so having this baby feels really nice. In other sewing project news, I've been working on a coat. I'll show you the fabric. I don't know if you can really tell because it's a bit hard to pick up in certain lights, but it's like a buffalo check. It's really quite... Um, subtle it's black and navy blue and with that i'm going to be um making this coat inspired by this totem jacket 
And so I've been posting about that on my Instagram. And honestly, everything comes to my Instagram before it comes here. It's just kind of how it goes. So if you want more up-to-date as it happens stuff, then you can follow me on Instagram. Otherwise, feel free to just hang out here and see as it trickles in. But um, what I'm really excited about with this coat is that it's... I'm sewing it, but I'm hand sewing it all because it's all pretty much going to be done in blanket stitch. A few people recommended crochet, but honestly, I just don't think that's where I, what I'm going to do. So I'm going to blanket stitch it. I'm going to be working on that. I think maybe this week or maybe tomorrow we'll see what, you know, what sparks joy for me. But I also have this fabric from the fabric store and I really want this to be like a little um like a little polo like a long sleeve polo and i'm gonna make that i already cut out the pattern i cut out the i cut out this dress from the guisos i can't remember the name off the top of my head um but i'll show a picture and um i've cut out the pattern and so i'm going to sew that um maybe later today i think because i think that will be really nice to have it's merino um which is such a luxurious fabric for this type of weather and then i'm also knitting this hat that i've got look how pretty this is i think this with this jacket is gonna look really glorious um this is a yarn this is a dk weight yarn held with with uh, mohair and this was like sort of a one-off skein that i don't think you could get anymore and then lastly i'm gonna get back to knitting but lastly i found the yarn so i actually realized i bought the solo which is i think the worsted weight but anyways i bought the solo instead of the sock the silk garden sock so this is a color omitama but i'm just gonna knit it without the mohair and um, I think that'll be fine. And I, this actually has mohair in it. It's got what, like 45% mohair. Um, so it, it won't be like as fuzzy as it would if it was, if it had like the mohair strand, but it's like such a nice blend. It's silk, mohair, and wool. So I, I love, I love that combo. And um, yeah, I'm gonna be uh, knitting the terrazzo sweater with this, but like I said, just without the mohair. Um, typical bl Bliss did it this way, so I am gonna jump on the terrazzo train because it's it's kind of funny um, with knitting trends. It's like anyone who's maybe a knitter knows, and like the knitting world in the knitting world, it feels like everyone has a, a terrazzo sweater, but in person, like no one I know well maybe now that I know a few knitters someone might have it but for the most part no one I know is gonna know what this sweater is they're just gonna think it's a beautiful sweater because it is a beautiful sweater but on the internet it's kind of like a dime a dozen at this point with like any petite knit patterns and I actually haven't really knit any petite knit patterns no I don't think I have knit any I've bought a few but I haven't knit any so um, that'll be fun to try out that's the Noro uh, Silk Garden Solo in Omitama, the colorway that was impossible to find. I'm really happy I found it. I got it from this little shop online, and I think they're out of Vancouver. I'll um, see if I can remember, and I'll put it either in the description box or on the screen. Um, but they shipped it really quickly, and so I feel very happy to be working with this yarn finally. It really is special, you guys. Like, it's spun with all these different colors and it's it's just so unique i love how it's like a neutral but it's got a rainbow in it it's honestly a perfect yarn and i think it'll feel really special to knit with it so i have got my work cut out for me i've got this sweater i've got this hat i really want to cast this on i've also got this yarn pairing to make the Ingrid sweater. So this is my little swatch of the Double Moss Ingrid sweater. This actually feels really soft, but my gauge is off, so I need to go down a needle size. Um, I think this was already, no, this was the four, the size four needle, so I think I need to go down, honestly, one or two. But that needle size is on, or I guess I just took, no, it'll be when I finish, uh, the sleeves will be on those needles. So I think I'll finish that and then I'll, um, I'll move to, once I finish this sweater, I'll move on to the Ingrid sweater. 
and that'll be kind of like a little holiday sweater hopefully i can finish it in time for christmas if i can kind of power through this one i think i will be able to um wow lots of scattered dots i basically just showed you all my whips um and i guess a finished object oh speaking of finished objects i do have one more okay one second i'll, I'll sh well you might as well just show you since we're here okay this i actually really love it it's really soft um i can never remember which way is the front and which way is the back but this is the warm-up sweater from Ispas Co. and it's knit with knitting for olive soft silk mohair and estelle estelle farms their eco harmony yarn and how lovely is this the yarns matched up perfectly i bought the knitting for olive without knowing if it was going to be the best match for this and it's a perfect match like it just the mohair gives just like a slight sheen Ooh, pick up but the mohair gives like a slight sheen but you can't really even tell i didn't make any modifications other than with the sleeves so you might hear my partner in the background because he's on the phone so i'm trying to like speak a little bit louder so you don't hear him but um i didn't uh i didn't decrease in the sleeves i just kind of made it to this like narrow cuff which real i should have actually decreased on this side as well it's not real actually even but anyways it works fine and it looks really cute and uh, yeah, I like that it's not a tight sleeve. And this hasn't been blocked yet. So I'm going to block that. Maybe, honestly, I'll just wait until I have to block. No, I'll wear it a couple more times because I like it at this um, the way that it is right now. And then I'll block it. Um, and then maybe it'll be around the same time that I have to block this. And I can just do them both together. So that's that. So that's my little finished object. This is my little finished object as well and then um this bad boy is almost there other than the sleeves so hopefully i can get that done and i'm gonna do quite a wide um hem i think probably at least as big as this collar is and then i think i'm actually with this collar going to fold it in half and stitch it down um because I think I just like that better. Um, I tried it on like this and it just feels a little too choky. So um, yeah, it's going to be a folded collar, which would be the only modification. And then, yeah, this sweater is the Louise sweater from North Side Knits Co. And the yarn is from Hobby. And I think, yeah, those are all of the things I have in the way of works in progress um, and finished objects. And then... A few other things I've kind of had on my mind recently is that I am going to Europe in November. I'm taking a two week vacation with my partner and I'm starting to think about one, like what I want to wear, what clothes I'm going to have. So we're going, we're flying into London. We're going to spend a few days in London, see some friends, um, do maybe some art stuff. And then we're going to go on, on we're going to go to Berlin and do some of the Christmas markets. Uh, we'll go to Berlin and be one other uh, city to check out the Christmas markets there and also visit our friends in Berlin. And then we might go to Copenhagen. I haven't decided yet. And then we will fly home out of Paris. And so I want to obviously go to some, some yarn stores, maybe some fabric stores, definitely yarn stores though, while I'm over there. And so I'm thinking of a few things. I'm thinking of like, one, what do I want to make for that trip? Because it's got to be cozy because it's going to be November. So it'll be a little chilly. Um, so maybe I'll make a pair of mittens and like a scarf. That would be pretty cute. Um, and then another thought is, what do I want to bring to work on? Like, what are good travel projects? I don't know, a hat, but like I feel like I'll finish a hat pretty quickly or maybe I'll just wear, make work on a sweater um, and then I'll have maybe finish the sweater and then have time to, and then wear it because that would that would be pretty cool. Um, but then the thing is with like working, yeah, like we'll be, we'll be taking the train a lot. Uh, that's how we're gonna primarily get around. And um, with taking the train, I'm gonna have a lot of time to knit. And so I'm like, I don't know. Anyways, what do you guys like to travel with in terms of projects? I haven't actually 
traveled, travel knitted anything in a while. So I'd like to hear your thoughts on that. And then I've been thinking if I want to do gift knitting and I just haven't decided because it just feels like too much work. But at the same time, I really do want to share this passion with my family and friends. I just feel like I sh maybe should have started already. And I just know that I hate being stressed and I just love knitting for myself. So I don't know, I'm really torn on gift knitting. It kind of feels like it might be too much work. But I bought the Charming Color Work Socks book and I'm like, oh, it would be so cute to knit some socks for some family members from that book. Let me get it, let me get it. So I've got, I've got these two knitting books and there's quite a few projects in both of them that are just really beautiful and, you know, might be good gifts. Um, but the Color Work Socks I bought because I was like, oh, this would be a really great book to make some knitted socks for family members or i don't know and there's a couple that i've had my eyes on uh this book is so good you guys she didn't send this to me i i bought it because i love it i loved it from the moment i saw it online but look how beautiful these are they're like inspired by the mountains and i have some family in the mountains i thought that might be or at least like on the west coast near some mountains i thought that might, might be fun i don't know let me know what you are you a gift knitter? Is it too late to start knitting socks for my family members? Or knitting anything for my family members? Sewing for family members? I don't know. Let me know what you think. I would like to know. Um, I'm leaning towards no, but I really should make up my mind. Oh, this has been a rambly little video, hasn't it? <laughs> I've had a lot of thoughts and a lot to say. And um, I think I just kind of feel excited. So... I think we're going to wrap it up here. Um, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I've got a lot of ideas, a lot of projects, a lot of excitement for the different things that I'm working on. And so I want to say thank you for being here. And I am really looking forward to showing up on this space maybe more creatively and potentially more authentically. I feel like I've been pretty authentic, but... I think I'm just ready to enjoy sharing just for the sake of sharing and seeing where that lands. So again, thank you so much. I really appreciate you being here. I will see you next time. Have a lovely weekend. Bye.